when you look at tyre reviews on the internet, um, the th key things you're looking for are, you know, what are they like on the road? Are they quiet? Are they going to stick to the ground in the, the wet and the dry and all those sort of boring sort of, sort of stuff. But here at Tire Review, we like to actually really test tyres to their limits or close to their limits um, so that you know what they're going to be like in real life. And so that's why we tend to actually, you know, we've come to a safe space out here and got just a little bit stuck. I think I can get out of here, but I'm not sure. So we'll see. Um, I'll talk about the other stuff, the on-road stuff, a little bit later, but let's just see if I can get out of this first and then you can jump in the car with me. Uh, the car is actually panned out in the front, so I think I can go out backwards. Um, had a bit of, an, a, bit of a, a try going forwards before, but um, fully locked, no avail because the nose is touching. Um, but yeah, let's see how we go backwards, because that's always fun. Now, that's well and truly stuck. Um, this is vaguely how I pictured starting off the review for these Mickey Thompson Baja bosses, because they are actually awesome tyres, but this is probably more stuck than what you would actually normally want to do. But um, luckily we have a recovery car and we'll see if we can get swinched out of here or something. Yay. All right, so let's see if we can get out of this hole. I've got rear lockers on, front lockers on. Against my better wisdom, I feel like we should be getting snatched out forwards, but we've only got one recovery car. So the issue is that if we try and bring the recovery car around, he'll probably get, or he might get stuck where I got stuck before. So we're gonna try snatching out backwards again because we've already got the gear set up. Um, but there is a lot of stuff behind the back left-hand tire, so it may not be a very friendly snatch, so we'll see how we go. All right, go for it. Oh, that was easy. Yep, yep, go good, work, work, yep, yep, yep. So don't drive me into the next hole. Now we're not stuck again. I'm going to drive around this bog hole and see if I can give you a reasonable review. Hang on, let me just turn off the rear locker. Give you a reasonable review of these tyres. So these are, like I was saying earlier, whoop, a, a quite an aggressive all-terrain tyre. One of the most aggressive all-terrain tyres that you'll find on the market. So they're three-ply sidewalls, which means that they've got uh, on the face, they've got between, I think, 8 and 12 plies. So 8 and 12, eight and 12 layers of metal and cords and that sort of stuff. Uh, but on the side, they've got three plies of metal and cords and stuff. Your average all-terrain tyre has two. So I've just come from the Toyo AT2 as, uh, you know, as my previous long-term test. Ooh, if I can get around this, oh, I might be able to. Might just have to go up on that rock a little bit. Let's see how sideways we go. Oh. A bit of rear locker. Maybe even a bit of front locker for this one. Oh. Oh, turn off the front locker because I can't steer. Turn off the rear locker. There we go. So Toyo A22 was excellent on the road, um, very low noise, but this is a review of the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss AT. So how do they compare to all of the all-terrains that I've actually driven on before? So they're actually, like I was saying, super aggressive, but they've actually been remarkably quiet. They're, I could certainly hear them as soon as I put them on that they were noisier than the AT2 and you know, most of the other all-terrains that I've had. 
Um, one thing I was pretty keen to listen out for long term was the uh, like whether they actually had that mud tire propensity to start generating noise um, after they've been used for a while. So I actually ended up using these for about 17,000 Ks. Um, and there's a huge mix of territory in that 17,000 Ks. So, you know, some to work and back, uh, a fair bit of trails, lots of gravel work. Um, and also we drove to Uluru and back um, in 20 days, 83 hours of driving and 7,000 Ks. Most of us actually on the blacktop. Ooh, we're going down quite a descent here. Uh, most of us on, whoa. Most of us on the blacktop. Um, but we got a little bit of red dirt under our feet, and which was awesome. Um, I deflated the tyres down to 20 psi, and we got onto some red dirt corrugations, and they actually handled it really well. That's probably the other thing that I was conscious of with these tyres as well. In being three ply sidewalls, um, I was wondering how well they would deflate, how well they would bag out at lower pressures. And um, while they don't deflate as much as a two ply sidewall tyre would do, um, it's, I certainly hit no limitations. I usually go down to about 20 psi, and there was no struggles with that whatsoever. Um, and yeah, 20, 20 psi on the um, on that territory um, was actually pretty pretty spot on. And we were actually just able to fly over the bumps. And obviously, we've got pretty good suspension in this car. Um, but before we deflated the tyres, um, the aerial on the car was going like this at the front, and afterwards, nothing. It was just smooth as butter. Um, let's go up the trail a little bit and I'll speak to you a little bit more about that. So, we're back on the trail now and um, I can tell you a little bit more about our Uluru trip. Where we drove from Tassie to the Red Centre. Um, it was, like I said, lots of hours, lots of kilometres. Um, caught the boat across from Tassie to Melbourne, um, which was pretty wicked. They just started, in between Melbourne and Adelaide, I started to hear a little bit of that warm, warm noise that you don't want to hear, because that means that the tyres are starting to wear unevenly. And that's, you get that sound, which you can hear more outside the car than inside the car. But, as soon as you start to hear that warm, warm noise, you need to actually get them looked after. And so I actually stopped into a tyre stop in Adelaide and uh, had a full rotation and alignment done. And they actually were quiet again, or quieter again after that. So totally worth doing. Um, got 17,000 Ks on them now and still no real trace of that, uh, that noise coming back. But it's something I would keep an ear on if I was actually going to be using these tyres for, you know, for their full lifespan, which I unfortunately am not. I'll have to move on to the next thing. Um, when you do own these, or if you choose to buy these, and I actually reckon you should because they're really, really good tyres um, from my experience. Um, so I have done that full mixture of um, on-road, off-road, more Ks on these tyres than I actually have done previously on, on other tests in general. Um, and day-to-day -day life, off-road life, traveling life, they've been excellent. Um, but what I might do is I'll, now the tires are gonna be a little bit cleaner after I've driven through some, some boggy holes. Um, just realized I've got the window down a little bit in the back. Um, after I've driven through, or after we've cleaned the tires a little bit, I might stop and just have a little bit of a, a look, a show and tell um, on the different parts of the tire. So I just thought I'd take a minute to go over the, um, the basics of the tyre again. So, tyres are nice and clean now like I hoped they would be. But, so these are the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss. And I'm, I've currently got them at about 19 psi on this tyre because we're off-road. And it's, again, it's an aggressive off-road tyre. So I can actually fit my, uh, sorry, aggressive all-terrain tyre. I can fit my finger into most of these gaps on the shoulder lugs. But then the central lugs are actually more densely packed. So that means it gets, it gets sort of the best of the all-terrain world through the center lugs and then some indication from the mud-terrain world through the shoulder lugs. And so the hope there is that uh, they're going to be 
good and quiet and relatively tame and good in the wet on the road, but still aggressive enough to handle pretty much most of what you can throw at, although you know we found the limits of it this morning. But we sort of intended to do that, you know, cause clicks, cause videos, etc. Um, unlike normal all-terrain tires, these are actually a three-ply sidewall tire as well. So normal all-terrains are two-ply, which gives them a slight more, you know, slightly more comfort factor. Um, and also they'll bag out a little bit more um, when you let the pressure down. But having a three-ply sidewall means they're a bit tougher. And also the Mickey Thompson Baja Boss AT actually has um, what Mickey Thompson called their power ply, which is a third ply that's on an angle and has 50% more, more denier cords, so thicker cords. Um, they're also a three-peak mountain snowflake rated tyre as well. So um, that means that they're rated to maintain conformity, conformity flexibleness or flexibility um, below certain temperatures or below, I think it's zero it is. Um, and also, and also they offer better traction in the snow and ice. Uh, and actually, they saved my bacon, absolutely. Um, I was heading through the central highlands of Tasmania um, on a three hour trip and thought that it wasn't very icy at the time, um, although I'd just been through some ice, but that was on the south facing, face, south facing slope of the hill. And I'd sort of opened it up a little bit more and we'll, we'll play a bit of overlay now, but um, uh, I thought that I was gonna slide into the ditch. And if I didn't have the amount of uh, siping, so these cuts through the center of the tire, if I didn't have the amount of siping and the, probably the Three Peak Mountain Snowflake, I would have been in the ditch, I reckon. Um, we'll probably play that back to you again in slow motion a couple of times, but um, I, that was proper heart in mouth moment. And I'm very glad that I had these tires on at that time because um, yeah, it was proper scary. They've actually got a bit of a rim protector on them as well. Uh, not huge now that it's actually mounted to the tire, but it will protect your precious rims from curbing on gutters in the shopping malls and that sort of thing. But um, what we'll do is we'll hop back into the car and um, I'll have a bit of a chat to you once we get onto the gravel. We're back on the gravel now and like I was sort of saying before, these tires are actually pretty good on the gravel. Like, you know, some all trains are a little bit more floaty around corners. They sort of don't inspire confidence. Um, some are amazing in the gravel. And these are probably in the middle towards being a little bit more amazing. So slow speed, um, dicey stuff is always going to catch any tire out. Um, but I mean, I'm on a gravel road right now and you know, no problems. And you know, like I've said before, I drive fast, so you don't need to. I don't, do that. I don't go above the speed limit though, right? Um, and so they will hold the road well on gravel. And um, like I was saying before, I managed to get these onto the, the red dust, red gravel near Uluru um, earlier in the month as well. And there they really impress. Um, they you know, deflated down to 20 psi able to just tear across the bumps, uh, didn't feel floaty, um, sort of did, you know, the speed limit, and they felt really directional. It was actually really just good fun, like, you know, not a care in the world apart from, you know, the other four people in the car. Um, and similarly on other gravel roads when we've been back here in Tassie, um, no complaints. Like, they're pretty good in the gravel. Um, there's no real noise to them in the gravel as well apart from you know, the usual background noise. But um, let's get to the main part that you're probably waiting for, which is the description of how they go on the black top. So we'll do that next. Just gonna cut into the video for a second and we'll do a quick cut and chip report. So this is where I've actually taken this tire off the, the car in the last few days. And um, as you can see, it's been fairly well used and abused. So again, 17,000 Ks, um, but I've got this lightly used version over here. So for full caveat, um, this tire was actually on the car for only about 100 Ks. Um, we realized that um, it was one of those very rare tires where one of the belts is slightly overlapped. And so it was actually, um, the balance was um, quite off. And so you could actually feel it in the car. So we whipped it off. Um, Mickey Thompson sent me a new one and they've been awesome ever since. Um, so you can sort of see quite plainly that this is the used one. 
this is the relatively new one. Um, but in terms of the actual damage to the tread is what I want to find here, uh, in terms of like cuts and chips and that sort of thing. So um, one thing I did do is some calculations and with my driving, I should get about 88,000 kilometers out of these tires, um, which is quite a lot really. I mean, they've got good deep tread depth um, from factory, um, but for the stickiness they offered on the road and yeah, both in the wet and in the dry, and also the aggressive tread they've got off-road. I was quite surprised about those calculations, but I ran them on the back of the beer coaster a few times and they came up to be the same. So I'm happy with that. Um, so we can see here, um, these little notches here, um, this one's a little bit abused, but the notches are basically the same. Across the whole tread pattern, there is some obvious signs of abuse. Like you can see there's just really light cuts across the top, but I think that's just part of general wear and tear, although there are some deeper ones through here. Um, there's, I, there's none of that real deep tread chipping that you have seen on some of these more aggressive tires. Uh, and I definitely took these on some interesting terrain. And the other thing is that <laughs> I've got a spot that I now try and rub the tire on every single time we go through a, um, I think it's actually a roundabout. And because these things have such aggressive um, aggressive uh, side biters. I was thinking surely they're not going to stick on for the whole time. But you can see that yes, we've lost most of the nipples on these side biters in comparison to the, the relatively new tyre. But there's actually surprisingly little damage on these and I think this is the one that I was rubbing. Um, although we did swap them around because like I said earlier I had to rotate. But the side biters across all of the tyres are still well and truly intact. Um, so, I mean, for 17,000 Ks in, 17,000 Ks of abuse, I think they've done pretty well. So, um, back to me in the car. So we're on the highway now. And this is where we get to answer probably a lot of the questions you might have because most of you will spend most of your time on blacktop and to be honest it's where I spend most of my time as well. Um, so dry handling. Their dry handling characteristics are actually really good. Um, I had a, uh, I had to borrow it a, a, one of the new Ford Ranger XLTs the other day um, and notice that the highway terrain tyres in that understeered like nothing else. I won't name and shame the brand, but it was just, yeah, it was, you know, if you push a little bit too hard into the roundabout, you know, your nose out and away you go. So um, from that aspect, um, I mean, obviously these tyres are a little bit wider. I'm running 295 70 17s at the moment. So there's more tread on the ground. Um, but, you know, their dry handling is actually pretty good. If you push them, you can really get them, you can actually unsettle them, but you know, don't drive like that. Um, in the wet, they are again remarkably good. So um, I've got a set of roundabouts near work that I push them through in the rain. And, um, and it's only if you really push them hard, and particularly going all the way around a roundabout, which you wouldn't normally do, um, that you can actually unsettle them. And then you'll sort of get a, a bit of a collection of understeer and oversteer, but it's pretty manageable. Um, there was one brown moment in there, um, which is about to go from 80 to 100. Um, now, as we get onto the main part of the highway. Um, yeah, so you can unsettle them if you push them hard, but in day-to-day -day driving, and I, again, push it more than the average bear does, um, because that's sort of, you know, it's what I do. It's how I can make up, come up with some information for these reviews. Um, they will actually hold on in the wet really well. Um, no trace of acrylic or anything like that. I mean, they've got lots of treads, so that's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, no, so no complaints whatsoever in the wet. Um, remarkably good considering the grip, the, no, sorry, the, 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 the voids in the tread they've got. Um, I would also attribute a, lot, attribute a lot of that to the, um, quite a lot of siping that the tyres have across their tread blocks. So that means you've got more edges to grip the, the road. And so um, I'm curious to, you know, to, see what they would be like if they didn't have those sides. I'd be curious. I mean, and that might be like 
the tyres that Chris is running at the moment, the, uh, I think the Legend EXP. I might see if I can bolt those onto this and um, go for a bit of a black and a wet and see how they go. Um, but yeah, so the other question is road noise. And yes, there is road noise. Um, I definitely noticed it. Uh, like I said earlier, I came from some Toyo AT2s. They're good, slight, semi, slightly more aggressive than standard all-terrains. Um, but they are you know, very much a more road-oriented tyre than these ones. Um, and there is definitely a market noise increase. That said, it's just a background word. And through the 17,000 Ks that I've been running these, um, I haven't actually, like they've got a bit noisier. I, like I said before, I have rotated and aligned them. And I think you really need to keep on that. Um, I, listening now, I can't, I can't hear any womp womp womp. Um, but I think um, if I didn't do that, then it didn't rotate in the line again in the next 3,000 Ks, they would start to sawtooth, they would start to get noisy, uh, and then you ruin your investment. And that's probably the other thing with these tyres is that they are actually really good at almost everything. Um, you know, they're not a full aggressive mud tyre, so they're not going to you know, pull you out of the bog like I was stuck into at the start of this. But for 99% of what 99% of us do, they're spot on but the investment factor is a thing. So they are not a cheap tire. Um, I actually priced out against uh, at three different shops the other day, and um, obviously prices vary across the range, and in our written article I'll put the pricing in, but in comparison to some other all-terrains out there, or lots of other all-terrains out there, these are not cheap, but it's the old adage, you get what you pay for. Um, these are a pretty amazing tire, and um, I think I would probably not hesitate, to, I wouldn't hesitate to run these day to day on my car, um, and if I could afford them, um, you know, but that's, that's the thing. Um, but there's probably one more question that's on your on your list, and I'll stop up here and um, talk about that in a minute. So, on to the big question. Now, We've arrived at the place where I can answer that question. Let me just grab the camera off and come outside with me and we'll answer the question. Come outside. Now the big question really is, are these tyres suitable to run on a mall crawler? And I mean, that's open to debate. Um, here we are in a mall. I think, you know, these tyres are actually pretty good looking. Um, like they're, you know, some of the best looking that I've had on the car. And, you know, as you can see, it sort of sets off nicely in amongst everything else. But no, in all honesty, they are actually a good looking tyre. Um, and normally you see more corals with mud tyres on and you know, all sorts of other craziness going. But these are good, quiet, aggressive all-terrain tyres that are actually going to be looking good in the mall, but also satisfactory for day-to-day -day life and for silly adventures like we've just had now. So, thanks for tuning in. See you next time.